This session is meant to demonstrate how easy it is to start and get familiar with Freelance 800F. The big advantage of Freelance 800F is that you perform all engineering work with only one tool. It works hand in hand with the controllers and with the DigiVis operator stations. In less than 10 minutes you will create a small program, load it to a controller and operate it from DigiVis. I believe you agree, this is really fast. Instead of a real AC800F controller, we will use a controller emulator, which will run on your PC. This has the advantage that you can perform the steps in the video without having physical access to the controller AC800F. The first step is to launch the Control Builder F. Two message boxes inform you whether you are using a demo version. For commercial use, you should order a license. After Control Builder F has been started, we create a new project. A project is a place where all items are stored and kept together. This could be programs, resources, operator graphics or user-defined function blocks. Specify a project name and a folder where you want to store the project. A form opens where you can enter project specific information. Here I go with the default settings. The project is now created. Two nodes are shown the pool node and the project node, named with the project name I entered before. The project node is the root for the project data, while the pool node is meant as a private repository where you can store data temporarily, as you will see later on. Now let's enter the data under the project node. Select the project node, open the context menu and choose Insert Next Level. The dialog offers only one choice, the configuration node as specified by IEC 61131. Select it and continue using the default values. Nodes for operator station and process station are required. To avoid repetition of several inserts, we import a pre-configured template file. Open the edit menu and select the import block command. The Import Partial Project window opens. Select projecttree.prt. The template will be imported and positioned under the pool node. Select all the nodes of the imported template and move them under the conf node. With the template we have imported the following nodes, an operator station and a process station. The process station consists of one user task list and one system task list with seven system tasks. Don't worry about the system tasks for the moment. Under the user task list you see a cyclic user task with 200 milliseconds cycle time. The user task includes a program list. A program list is simply a structural element to take several function block diagrams or other programs. Insert a function block diagram under the program list. For this purpose select the program list, open the context menu and select Insert Next Level. Select function block diagram FBD and name it NP10. Now the structure we need is ready. Double click the function block diagram and open the editor. As expected the editor shows a blank diagram. Insert a new function block. IDF1 A function block which is meant to start and stop motors. You can see the frame of the function block is shown at the cursor. Open the parameter window of the block by a double click. Red fields are mandatory. Enter NP10 into the name field and on and off into the status text fields. Let the remaining fields unchanged and click OK. Now draw connection lines 
from the out terminal to the feedback terminals. To invert a signal, click at the terminal while holding the control key. The inverted signal is visualized by a black dot. Feeding back the output does not make sense in real processes. You would use real signals from the field instead. But here it helps to get the block working. Click the check button to run the plausibility check on this diagram. You see no errors. Back in the project tree, select the topmost node and perform again a plausibility check to check everything placed below this node. Two errors are listed. These are due to the fact that we haven't allocated resources for the operator station and the process station. Up to now, they are only part of the project tree. To perform the resource allocation, open the hardware structure. In the new window, only an engineering station symbolized by a laptop and an Ethernet connection are shown. Right click into the area right to the laptop and select Insert Operator Station. Another PC is added to the hardware structure. Double click the grey rectangle and select OS1. Now this hardware element refers to OS1 which we have previously defined in the project tree. Here you see an example how the Control Builder F components work hand in hand. Perform the same steps for the controller emulator. Right click into the field under the Ethernet, select Insert Controller Emulator and allocate it to PS1. This is the place where we define that we use an emulator instead of a real controller AC800F. Function block diagrams are working in the same way with both controllers, the real AC800F and the controller emulator. Now we have to adjust the IP addresses for the emulator and DigiVis operator station. Therefore, open the network configuration window selecting Network in the Hardware Structure menu. Edit the resource ID of the operator station and its IP address. Copy the IP address into the clipboard before leaving the dialog. Perform the same step with the emulator and paste the IP address here. After these adjustments, perform again a plausibility check. You see no errors found. Now it's time to load the program. Therefore, enter the commissioning mode. Here you can see that both the operator station as well as the process station have no connection. This is because neither the controller emulator nor DigiVis was started. Let's start the emulator first. Open the Internet Explorer and enter the IP address. It will help a lot if you create a favorite for the emulator page as I did. Click the Start Controller button so that a new controller with Station ID 1 is started. If you take a look at the CBF's commissioning mode, you will see that the process station is now running, but with the wrong version of the program. That's correct, as we haven't loaded the program yet. But before we perform this, we start DigiVis Operator Station first. After startup, it shows the system display. Now we load the process station and afterwards the operator station. When this is done, switch back to DigiVis. Click the Tag List button and select NP10. The faceplate is shown and you can start the motor. Start the motor via the faceplate 
and the connection is shown with a solid line. If you open the text parameter window via double click and select the second page, you can force the output. Select off and click the right button. The connection is immediately shown as dotted line and the faceplate is also updated. To summarize what we have learned in this session, in Control Builder F we created a new project, inserted a process station, an operator station and a function block diagram in configuration mode. Then we inserted a process station and an operator station in the hardware structure and assign them to those defined in the function block diagram. We specified the resource ID and IP addresses for both stations in the network configuration. We started Digivis and the controller emulator. We loaded both the process station and the operator station and then in Digivis we opened the faceplate of the tag. We operated the tag from its faceplate as well as from the parameter window of Control Builder F. As you see, it took less than 10 minutes to create a simple function block diagram, to load it into the controller and to Digivis. This demonstrates how easy and intuitive it is to perform several functions in a controlled way within Control Builder F.